Hello, this is God of Tomatoes, and today I'm going to be giving a guide on the Princess and Queen and CEO as a version point fifty four. When you first load up the game, you receive one queen. However, you can always gain more queens and princesses. The first way to gain more queens and princesses is to buy boxes. They can both be found in the basic, premium, and ultra box. As princess is a rare unit though, you have the highest chance of receiving it in the premium box, and queen being an epic unit is most likely to be found in the ultra box. If you are looking to buy them en masse though, or you are simply aiming to buy a higher tier version, then it's much easier to buy them in the market. As a rare unit, princess starts at a price of only 3 rubies per unit, and as an epic unit, queen starts at a price of only 10 rubies per unit. But as you can tell, their prices have increased as more have been purchased. Each tier of princess and queen are unique and carry with them a different strategy. However, most of the tiers are similar enough that they can fit the same general purposes. The base princess costs zero value, has enchant for the first turn, and can move to any adjacent square. However, if it dies, you will lose three more up. Princess Plus gains an additional movement square in each direction, sprouting from it, and has an extra turn of enchant, but if it dies, you will lose seven more up. Princess Double Plus follows the pattern thus far and gains movement and enchant, although if it dies, you will lose twelve more up. And finally, Princess Triple Plus gains a knight's movement without the attack function, and an additional turn of enchant, but it comes to a grand total of losing 18 morale if it dies. When a princess reaches the enemy champion line, they promote into a queen of the same tier. The base queen costs 21 value, and can move or attack the entire expanse of the board within a single direction. The second tier of queen costs 24 value, and gains a knight's movement. The third tier of queen costs 28 value, and can now attack on its knight squares. The final tier of queen costs 30 value, and can now swap with ally units on its knight squares. The princess tiers can relatively be separated into two main sections, push promoters and protected promoters. For simplicity's sake, I will simply be calling them pushers or protectors. The strategy part of the video will go in more depth on what these terms mean. The base princess and princess plus are what I would call pushers, as they lack mobility and have a low death penalty. Princess double plus and princess triple plus, however, have a high death penalty, making them targets for the enemies. Thus, they are protectors. Queens, similarly, can be broken down into two main groups, checkmaters and mobile strikers. Once again, these terms will be more thoroughly described in the strategy part of the video. The base, plus, and double plus queens are all checkmaters, though they differ slightly in playstyle, whereas the triple plus queen is a mobile striker due to its swap ability. The queen is a unit from classical chess, however the princess, in the way it is designed, is unique to CEO. Even with this though, both the queen and princess have a rich history. Princess is simply the feminine form of the word prince, generally referring to a young ruler or someone who is soon to be a ruler. CEO seems to take inspiration for its princess from fairy tales and the like as the princess starts the game enchanted, which mirrors how princesses in fairy tales often are enchanted or cursed at the start of the story. The princess also has a move pattern similar to the queen, minus an attacking function, which might be attributed to how a princess is merely a young queen. As for the morale loss on death, besides being for balance, it makes sense as a losing a ruler would demerit the troops. The word queen can be traced back to the Proto-Germanic word queenez, which means wife or woman. In Old English, this was later changed to quin, which could also be used to describe a female ruler of a state. This was likely due to the rise in English kingdoms, and being that the queen was the most famous woman, when people said queen, a term for woman at the time, they implied the woman at the top. The move set that the queen has in chess likely has little to do with the etymology of a queen though, and more to do with wanting royal endorsement. 
If chess made anyone from the royal palace seem weak or unimportant, it would have likely caused first swift execution. The princess's strength solely relies on its promotion. It has no attack power and hurts the user if it dies. However, if it promotes, the user can gain a huge advantage over the enemy, enough that it can completely change the tide of battle. The queen is a unit that doesn't hard counter any specific unit, meaning although it is powerful and can be traded for other king class units, those that cost a similar amount to the king, or even the king itself, it has no units which it will always beat that are similar in cost. This doesn't mean the queen is weak though, as it still outcompetes many units with its wide range and its ability to attack in any direction. Although there is no unit that the princess can hard counter, there are a variety of units which can easily counter it, most of which are those that can attack from a distance, but also magic and ranged units, and a few special units due to unique or rare abilities. The following are units that can counter a princess. Comet Summoner Gravity Mage Siren Lilith Necromancer Fire Elemental Aquarius Soul Flare Fire Mage Poison Mage Alchemist Arachnid Nexus Knight Paladin Tiger Valkyrie Drake Snake Apprentice Pride Hydromancer Templar Crusader Duelist Fencer Haunted Armor Butterfly Lust Slime Samurai Hoplite and Behemoth The Queen has no specific units which hard counter it, making it a very safe unit to use without worry of RNG or developing a unit solely to protect it. However, that doesn't mean the Queen is invincible. When using a Queen you should be especially wary of low cost units with decent or strong attack power as the Queen can't efficiently trade with them. When using Princesses, there are two main strategy focuses, Pushers and Protectors. However, both types can also be used in conjunction with a separate strategy, which I shall denote as Sacrifice. Pushers are low mobility Princesses that also lack a severe death penalty. Due to this, they can be used with units which can propel them towards the promotion line, without much worry if they die in the process. Protectors, on the other hand, are princesses with enough mobility to promote on their own, but too high a death penalty to put them in a risky situation. They are called protectors as they require the user to defend them in some way so that they don't die without good reason. And the sacrifices are units which can easily cover the expanse of the board to save the princess last minute in the worst of scenarios. For the purposes of ensuring the princess's safety, I will only be including those that can teleport the princess away from danger, and those that can swap places with the princess in this category. The following are units which synergize with pusher princesses. Phantasm, Harpy, Portal, Sylph, Synergize well with protector princesses are Dryad, Wisp, Lich, Bomber, Fireball, Royal Guard, Frost Method, and Alchemist, Butterfly. Enchantress, Hostage, Earth Element, Snake, Wrath, Stone Mage, and Tombstone.
Finally, we reach those that can perform the sacrifice function for princesses. Wisp triple plus. Royal Guard triple plus. And Beacon. And Beacon. With Queens, there are similarly two main strategies. Checkmaters and Mobile Strikers. However, there is a separate extra strategy for Double Plus and Triple Plus, which I like to call Gorilla Control. For Checkmaters, they simply need to trade with the King, which will typically happen mid or late game using the Queen. Mobile Strikers, however, rely on their swap ability to maneuver units with high attack power and low mobility in order to threaten the opponent, and at the same time, the Queen is defending the unit it swapped with. Gorilla Control is a particular late game strategy where one would use the unblockable knight attacks of the Queen, combined with its long range, to quickly dispose of any enemies which leave the protection of their allies. The following are units that can combine with the mobile strike queen. Legionary. Spearman. Ranger. Fireball. Tiger. Slime. Vampire. Samurai. Fire Elemental. Lust. Gravity Mage. Soul Flare. Hydromancer. Pyromancer, Chastity, Pikeman, Pikeman, Null Mage, Stone Mage, Fire, Bishop, Moonfox, Medusa, Reaver, Frost Method, No, Snake, Void Mage, and Arachnid. It should also be noted that the Royal Guard synergizes well with any tier of Queen due to its ability to teleport to any Royal. 